As an environmental economist, I often have to explain to people what it is I actually do. That includes my parents on our weekly phone calls. I work to understand trade-offs between environmental, economic, and social well-being. My PhD journey started with a conversation with an environmental policy expert. We talked about the challenges that Western Australia faces with climate change. That Perth's rainfall has dropped 20% over the past 50 years while its population has boomed. And that local councils are having to adapt to tighter water restrictions as they work to provide amenities like parks. The conversation ended with a question that would become the focus of my PhD research. How much worse off would communities be if parks used less water? Take a look at the picture on the left. Does it look familiar to you? Parks like these are common across Perth, and watering them requires about one-sixth of urban water consumption. As a Canadian from Vancouver, or Raincouver, it was uncomfortable for me to learn how much parks here in Perth looked similar to the ones back at home, despite the differences in climate. This motivated me to dig deeper. Is it worth using all that water to keep parks green? To find out, I designed a survey to understand Perth residents' preferences for urban park design. The survey included an experiment that allowed me to quantify the trade-offs people make between different aspects of park design, including water use. In the survey, respondents were shown different park designs, presented in pairs like the two you see here, and were asked to choose their favorites. The parks differed based on the types of vegetation they had, and in the council rates they'd have to pay to see those parks in real life. How did it go? I found that most people actually prefer parks more like the one on the right. I found that the optimal extent of native vegetation in urban parks ranges between 40 and 100%. This is an amazing result. It means that people actually prefer parks that use less water and that do a better job of supporting biodiversity. And the good news gets better. Through financial analysis, I found that local councils can save money by offering parks more like the one on the right. In the end, I did not quantify how much worse off communities would be if parks use less water, because they wouldn't be worse off, they'd be better off. The policy expert that started me on this journey is surprised but delighted by my results. He had thought this would be a case where adapting to climate change would require sacrifice. Instead, my research provides an example of a win-win-win scenario for environmental, economic, and social well-being.